Recently, some of my students were recreating the interiors of the Serenity ship from the TV show Firefly. And throughout the ship, there were areas that had grating that instead of modeling it, uh, we chose to use transparency maps uh, so that we could uh, make it look like there was all this geometry, but we didn't have to take a render hit for the geometry, especially since we weren't getting that close to it. Now, when using transparency maps, sometimes, depending on the type of lighting that you work with, uh, some issues can come up. And I thought I would go over those issues and uh, show you some solutions for dealing with them. So let's go ahead and close this image. And in this scene, I've already got a few things loaded up. Uh, I've got a, a ground plane here, and I've got two flat objects, just two squares, that we can use to apply some images uh, with transparency. Now I've also got my camera set up and I've got a spotlight shining down. I'm going to go ahead and do a quick render and as you can see we've got the two flat planes and our ground plane and we can see our spotlight here. Uh, I want to cast shadows so I'm going to go ahead and head over to render, render globals and turn on ray trace shadows do another render and we've got uh, we got the shadows casting from uh, the two planes now a lot of times I like using shadow maps I can get soft shadows um, but also uh, sometimes it's the the route that uh, I want to go to get a particular type of lighting so I'm going to go ahead and turn ray trace shadows off because we won't need it if we use shadow maps turn that off I'm going to go to light properties and under shadows where it says shadow type I'm going to change this to shadow map go ahead and do a render and there we go so we pretty much have the same thing a little softer edges uh, but I'm going to start applying transparency maps and we'll see what will happen so I'm going to go ahead and close the light properties panel down open up the surface editor and hop over to the blue square here and under transparency let's add uh, let's add a image map so image map planar in the Y uh, image we'll just add like a grate some we'll add some lines I'm gonna size it down a little bit use the texture and there we go we've got a grate but we can see that our shadow is still uh, this perfect square without the, the grate going on there. Let's go over to our light properties panel, change the, I'm going to go ahead and close the surface editor, change the shadow type to ray trace, go back to render, render globals, and turn ray trace shadows on. And we get the result that, uh, that I was after. I want to be able to make it look like it isn't a square and that it's just these cross beams making up this grating. Uh, but I want to use shadow maps. So I'm going to go ahead and turn ray trace shadows back off, go to light properties, shadow map, and do another render just so we can see that yes, we do have uh, the problem that we need to get around. Now, if you're using shadow maps, this will happen if you're using uh, transparency. If you use any other type of light, you should be okay. So how can we get around this? How can we make this work? Well, one way is to use clip maps. So let's take a look at using a clip map. We'll use it on this yellow square uh, just so we can compare the two. So let's go over to the object properties panel for this object. So object, it's the third object in the scene. And I'm going to head over to the render tab. Under the render tab, I'm going to choose clip map and open up the texture editor. Okay. And with this open, let's use the same settings that we used on the blue square. So uh, we're going to use an image map, projection type planar in the Y. We'll choose the same image and we'll choose the same scale, which was 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay, and I'm going to use this and do a render. And as we can see, we can get the grading to not only show up here, but also show up in the shadow. So what's going on? Well, with a clip map, it actually knocks out the object based on the image. Uh, one thing to note is that it's, it's all or nothing. It's either black or it's white. There is no gray tones involved. And one way that we can take a look and, and see that is to go back into the clip map and let's 
change this to a procedural texture. Now, in this procedural texture, you can see we've got black, white, and various shades of gray. If I take the contrast and knock it up to 100%, well, then it's black and white. Well, let's drop that back to zero and see what happens. Even though we've got gray tones, let's use this texture and let's do a render. It treats it as if it's just black and white. And that's one limitation of a clip map is that it's looking for just black and white. If you really want to know what it's going to look like, your best bet is to bump the contrast up on this. Or, you're, or if you're going to use an image, make sure that it's a black and white image. If it's 51%, then that would be the same as 100%. If it's 49.9%, that's the same as 0%. So that's, uh, that's something good to know about a clip map. So let's go ahead and change that. Uh, let's go change that back to the image. Okay. And we'll use all those settings. And we'll go ahead and do a render. If you see that your shadow on a shadow map is a little choppy, well, it might mean that your um, size of the shadow map needs to change. So if you go to your light properties panel and under shadow map size, if we size that up and do a render, you'll see that the choppiness goes away because it needed a bigger map size for the shadow with as big as it's appearing on the screen here. So if you find yourself using transparency maps and want to use shadow maps and you want a proper shadow, uh, don't forget about the clip map option that's found under the object properties and it's under the render tab under clip map and you just click the T for texture editor, set up your texture and you're good to go.